Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, 10 Ways to Wear It. I'm Alicia and on this channel, I take one fashion item or one fashion trend and show you all 10 different ways to wear it. Now today's video is all about how to do a successful mid-year reset. And by reset, I basically mean starting over. The middle of the year is the time for me that I tend to start to slump a little bit. And I don't mean slump in posture, I mean slump in my goals, kind of fall off the goals that I had at the beginning of the year. And it tends to make me feel a little bit down and it starts to be like a ripple effect. So I like to do what's called a mid-year reset. I like to really hone in on my goals again, focus in on them, and I'm gonna be sharing 10 tips for you all. I'm also gonna be doing some demonstrations of all these things that I do, just so you get a better idea of them. So if you would like to do a mid-year reset, maybe you find yourself slumping or just feeling kind of down about not achieving your goals and things like that, you're gonna love today's video and it's gonna be very helpful. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, you all, so jumping right into my first tip. My first tip for you all to start your mid-year reset is to clean up. And I mean literally go room by room and knock out everything that needs to be cleaned. I find that being in a nice, clean, tidy space is one of the best ways to immediately lift my energy, help me to be more productive, and just open up the space for me mentally to do what I need to do. So I would encourage you all, go through each room, like for example, in my kitchen, I'll go through each drawer, organizing everything, everything, getting rid of anything that I need to. I'll go through my pantry, throw out anything that might be expired, and then I'll clean. I'll mop the floors, clean the walls, clean my oven, scrub my sink and everything like that. So everything's nice and fresh. Then I'll move into the living room. I'll strip my sofa of all of the things, the pillow covers and everything like that on my sofa, wash those, wash all my pillow covers, clean my ceiling fans, vacuum, clean up my cabinets. I got y'all in a new uh, space today. I faced y'all the other way, the, the, the way you've never seen in my videos but decided to turn y'all around today but I'll clean my cabinets dust off everything clean all my surfaces vacuum pull down my curtains wash those and everything iron them put them back up go in my bedroom wash all of my linens wash those curtains clean the floors dust everything like I literally write out a list for each room and I just go room by room cleaning everything and organizing everything and I also tend to do declutters while I'm cleaning so I'll go ahead and declutter organize and then I'll clean and I think that's one of the best ways to start a mid-year reset we all tend to do that at the beginning of the year so it's good to do it again at the middle of the year so that you're starting off fresh and feeling good and re-energized so that you can tackle the rest of the year in a nice, clean and tidy space. So if there's things that have been lingering around the house, you know, things that you know need to be done, go ahead and knock those out. Don't overwhelm yourself, write out a list, you know, and just dedicate time here and there to slowly check off the things on that list. It doesn't have to be all in one day. You can do it over multiple days, over multiple weekends. Just make sure that you write it out and go ahead and check off those things so that you're starting off the rest of the year in a nice clean tidy space I promise you it is so so beneficial I would encourage you all to do that first on to the next tip so my next mid-year reset tip for you all is to schedule a physical and if you feel like you need to schedule an appointment with your therapist now if you didn't have a physical at the beginning of the year this would be a great time to do it in the middle of the year or if you've been having some issues going on that you feel like you need to have checked out this would be a great time to do it so that you have the rest of the year to go ahead and address any issues that you need to. I found myself in a recent severe energy slump. I was feeling really, really tired and sleepy and like really all I could manage to do was get to work, do my job as best I can, get home and get in the bed. And usually I'm able to do my content and things like that in between work, but I just found my energy so low that I was like, you know what, I really need to go to the doctor. And I did have a beginning of the year physical, but I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and go get another blood test because sometimes another blo a blood test can tell you things that, you know, other things may not be able to tell you so what I found was that I was really low in iron so I needed to start taking my iron again because I had slumped on taking my vitamins I really just kind of fell off of doing a lot of the things I was supposed to do and having that physical done really did help me to figure out okay my iron is low and then also my doctor encouraged me to get out and get more Sun if I can so I was feeling a little bit vitamin D deficient and that was showing up in my blood test so I'm just sharing that with you all to encourage you if you're feeling like physical issues in your body you know when something is different or something is wrong it may be a great idea to go ahead and schedule another physical and I know you know we're discouraged from going to the doctor more than once a year but honey 
I'm like, I paid for my insurance. I'm going to go to the doctor. So I think it is a great thing to do. But like I said, also scheduling an appointment with your therapist is another great thing to do mid year, because it's a great way to just kind of tap in to any bad feelings you might be having, any mental health issues you might be having, any mental slumps, anxiety, and things like that. It really can creep up, especially when you feel like you haven't achieved the goals that you set in the beginning of the year. Those things can really bring you down. And so it's a good idea to really stay in touch with your therapist all year long. But certainly mid-year point is when I like to get back on track. And today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you don't know about BetterHelp, I'm gonna give you some great information all about them. Check this out. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. With so much going on in the world today, prioritizing your mental health is more important than it's ever been. BetterHelp is one of the best resources to do that privately, conveniently, and affordably. BetterHelp is an online platform that connects people with licensed, trained, and experienced therapists to help them navigate life's challenges. Gone are the days of having to wait weeks for an in-person appointment when a crisis arises in your life. BetterHelp is here for you and ready to provide you with the best mental health services on your time and in your territory. All you have to do is go on their website, fill out their questionnaire, which will help them to match you with the right professionals. It's really just that easy. Join over 2 million plus people who have chosen BetterHelp to get the help and guidance they need. Start putting your mental health first because it's such an important component of our overall health. And now you can get the help you need with the touch of a button. No more excuses. Alrighty, so hopefully that little segment helped you all to understand who BetterHelp is as well as the services that they offer. I think they are amazing. And when I found myself recently feeling super anxious and somewhat down about the things that I had going on in my life, I reached out to them and set up my account immediately and scheduled an appointment with one of their therapists recently. So I'm super happy to now be working with them. I absolutely love BetterHelp. And I also love the therapist that I'm working with now. So I'm just looking forward to just being in tip top shape in every way in my life, physically, mentally, emotionally, in every way. And BetterHelp is definitely going to help me to do that. So definitely check that description. Make sure you reach out to them, particularly if you're wanting to just talk to someone, deal with any issues, but certainly you can seek out BetterHelp just for everyday challenges. It doesn't have to be a major crisis in your life for you to see a therapist and certainly never let the stigmatisms about therapy bother you. Therapy is healthy. It's no different than going to a physical doctor to get checked on things physically. It's the same thing. Your mental health is just as important as your physical. So certainly reach out to them, set up your account today and schedule an appointment with one of their amazing therapists. Okay, so my next tip for your mid-year reset is to plan out fitness and self-care days. So sadly, a lot of us are so busy that we have to schedule in almost everything in our schedules. I know that is the case for me. I almost have to like plan things into my schedule. It's rare that I can just be spontaneous about going to work out or planning self-care things. I have to actually like plan them into my schedule. And so that's something that I'm certainly doing these days to make sure that I do them. This is the time of year that a lot of us tend to fall off the wagon with our fitness goals, our self-care goals, and things like that. So it's just a great time to really just get back on track. Don't beat yourself up about it. Don't be hard on yourself, but just work on getting back on track by scheduling those days. For me personally, right now I'm trying to do two days a week where I take really long walks of an hour or more. I have some really great areas locally in my area that I can go and walk. So I'm trying to schedule two long walks. And during those walks, I'll incorporate my weight my hand weights or something like that to really get some good hit cardio in there. So I'm planning those. I'm also working on doing my 10 minute stretches every night before bed. I did that for years. I used to stretch before I would get in the bed and would always help me sleep so good. So I'm really trying to get back to doing that. I'm also trying to do three self-care related things every Sunday. Sunday is usually the day that I kind of just pamper myself and spoil myself, sleep in late, let the sun wake me up and just try to take care of myself. So right now on Sundays, I'm trying to schedule in three self-care things, whether that's doing like a face mask, my cleansing bath, you know, just something relating to self-care, self -care. you know, shaving my face, using my electrolysis on my face, just really focusing on doing at least three things on Sundays that relate to self-care so that I start off my Mondays feeling refreshed and ready to go. So I love the idea of scheduling in fitness and self-care things to make sure that I am taking care of myself. So I would encourage you all to do that. If you have to start off just doing a 30 minute workout 
or walking in place for 30 minutes, you know, twice a week, do that. It all adds up and it all means something and it all contributes to our overall well being and health. So schedule in those fitness days, schedule in some self care things, you know, just make sure you're doing something to better your life in the way of self care and fitness. So I would encourage you all to do that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next tip. So the next thing I want to encourage you all to do for your mid-year reset is to go over your financials. Really look at how you've been doing so far this year and make adjustments accordingly and also challenge yourself to do better. I know me personally, I set up a lot of financial goals at the beginning of the year and I reached zero of them so far. We're in July and I've reached zero and that has been weighing really heavy on me. It's been making me feel a degree of anxiety. So that's certainly something I would encourage you all to do right now go over your finances look at your spending patterns look at where you need to cut back and do that because this is the time that you can kind of restart the year and really make some progress towards the end of the year I know I personally have the desire to buy a home and you know I didn't get approved for the amount that I wanted originally because in order to live in the area that I want to live in I need a certain amount to be approved because the homes there you know they cost that cheddar right but y'all, I slumped on achieving my financial goals. My spending habits need to be addressed and that's definitely something that I'm doing from this point toward, toward the end of the year. I'm gonna be adjusting things, really paying better attention to my spending and where my money is going so that I can hopefully get closer to some of those goals at the end of the year. I won't reach them because I'm already restarting at the middle of the year and I'm really not that close to achieving them, but it is a great time for me to go ahead and start over and make adjustments adjustments where I can. So that's certainly something I would encourage you all to do. Sit down, go over your finances. If you have to set up another account, like a savings account with no debit card, no cards attached to it, that you're going to just have money going straight into it, do that right now. Or if you're going to just, you know, just work overtime and not touch that money, do that right now. Whatever you need to do, just make sure that you go over your finances right now and really start to address anything that you need to. There's talks of recessions, there's talks of food shortages. We know that the gas prices are out of control right now. So there's a lot of reasons right now to really hone in on your finances and make sure that you are making sense with the things you're spending your money on. That's certainly something that I'm going to be doing. And that's something I would encourage you all to start doing right now. Mid-year reset, we can do it. Okay, so the next tip that I have for you all relates to the last one, and that is to calendar in or schedule no spending days. Now that can be no spending days, no spending weeks, or an entire no spending month. Whatever you can do will help. This will help you to address your savings like me, because like I said, I failed to even get close to any of those goals I set at the beginning of the year. So I'm really trying to play catch up right now. So no spending days are something that I'm gonna be calendaring in for myself. And those basically are gonna include clothing and shoes and accessories and things like that. Basically those miscellaneous, you know, non-essentials that you need for life is what I'm going to not be spending on so I'm gonna stop spending on clothes shoes and accessories and you know hopefully during my no spending months I'm also gonna attempt to do no hauls so that I'm not encouraging you all to spend as well like in my videos of course I will link items but I'm gonna basically focus on styling videos for those no spending months and weeks that I schedule in so I will announce them to you all so that you'll know when they are I'm certainly planning to try to do September as a no spending month so I'm going to try to do the entire month of September. I tried to do July, but it didn't work out. I tried to start this month, which is the mid-year point, but unfortunately I failed. I'm being transparent with you guys, I shopped. And so I'm going to try again in September. August is not a great month for me to do it because there's just so many birthdays in my family and things like that. And then I'm traveling in August and stuff like that. So August is not a great month for me to do it. But September, I think, would be a great month. October would be maybe scheduling in a week or two. November is when I tend to do my Christmas shopping and things like that. So I won't do November, but I certainly plan to do September and hopefully a week or two in October. So, But I will announce it to you guys when I do it. It. But yeah, I would say calendar in some no spending days. And like I said, that can be days, weeks, or an entire month and hone in 
on not spending on anything that is not a life essential. So if it's not food, if it's not water, if it's not, you know, the things you need for your house or cleaning materials, stuff like that, that I think is okay. But try not to spend on those miscellaneous, you know, things that we can live without. So I'd say schedule those in and that goes along with my last tip to really help you catch up financially if you're struggling to do that. My next tip for you all for a successful mid-year reset is to start working on a cleanse or detox. And that can be a light cleanse. For me personally, I don't like harsh cleanses and I don't wanna go into detail, but y'all know what I mean. You know how some people drink those cleansing teas and it just like uh, works on your stomach. Like I cannot do that because I have to get up and go to work. So I like gentler things like lemon water, ginger water, you know, chlorophyll is a great way to cleanse, aloe vera water, things like that are what I like to do to sort of cleanse. I like healthy, natural detoxing teas like dandelion tea, green teas, and things like that. So I tend to kind of really hone in on those things and incorporate them into my daily diet. So I have a great clip for you all to show you what I do when I'm trying to detox and cleanse my body. I'll go ahead and insert that and let you guys watch right now. Okay, so really quickly, I wanted to show you all what it looks like when I am doing one of my detoxes slash cleanses. I have a juicer, but honestly, it's just too taxing to juice all those vegetables and I really don't have the space for the vegetables. So I choose to buy my juices from an organic juicery. It's called Creation. You might have this in your area. It is a chain and they have weekly detoxes that you can buy but I like to personally pick out what I want to drink because I'm pretty specific about it. And these are the juices that I drink when I'm cleansing. I drink their celery juice which is just all celery. It has no other ingredients in it. It's just celery and a little bit of water. So love that. I also drink chlorophyll water. And if you don't know about chlorophyll, it has a ton of medical benefits. You can look them up, but one of them is that it's a cancer preventative and it also helps with red cell turnover. So it does a lot of amazing things for the body, including detoxes the body and detoxes the blood. So I love chlorophyll. I actually take a couple of drops of chlorophyll every morning. And when I am cleansing, I drink this chlorophyll water that I get from the organic juicery. I also use their green juice and this is called 50 shades of green and it just has a ton of green vegetables in it as you can see it has cucumber kale mixed green celery parsley romaine lettuce wheatgrass I could go on and on it has a ton of vegetables in it but I love this so I usually buy like a bunch of bottles and that's what I drink as well as lemon water I love lemon water um, that's something that I drink on a regular basis pretty much daily I'll take me some lemons to work and slice them up and put them in my water because lemon water is also a detoxifying um, element and it has a ton of antioxidants which you know reverses aging and helps with your skin it also has tons of vitamin c which protects your immune systems and st strengthens your nervous systems and lemons have also cancer fighting properties so i love lemon water as well so i always keep some fresh organic lemons on hand to slice up but yes wanted to show you all these are the juices that I buy when I'm juicing. I keep them nice and cold in the refrigerator and I'll usually pack one of the 50 shades of green, one of the chlorophyll waters, one celery juice, and then I'll pack a really big salad. So I'll do like a, a kale salad or some type of Caesar salad. I do add meat to, to my salads. I try to keep them mostly veggies, but I do add meat like chicken or shrimp to my salads. But that's what I do when I am cleansing and detoxing. I really try to drink healthy juices that nourish my body and just flush me out really good. So it helps keep me young and helps me keep me feeling good. And this is also another great way to get your veggies in. So if you know you don't eat a ton of vegetables and you know that you're kind of lacking on that, Definitely find an organic juicery. We all have them in our area. Don't tell me you don't have one. And if you don't have one, it's worth driving to to get some vegetables into your system because for a while I was just eating mostly junk and I felt like junk. <laughs> so really had to clean up my diet a little bit. And so I drink this because I don't eat a ton of kale and broccoli and stuff like that. So that's another tip for you all to get your antioxidants in. Keep your body nice and clean and get your nutrients. Try this out. But this is my detox program right here in a cart. <laughs> 
Alrighty, so hopefully that clip helped you all to see a little bit better what I do when I'm focusing on detoxing and cleansing my body. I do tend to incorporate things that I buy outside of the home as well as things that I make here. So I'll make me a big pitcher of lemon water, put some lemon and lime slices in there and have that in the refrigerator. I'll go ahead and buy my detoxing teas, which is dandelion tea, green tea, and things like that. And I'll make sure to drink that every day. I'll usually drink a cup of tea before I go to bed. And those are the things basically that I do to sort of start to that detoxing and cleansing process. And I love to really focus in on doing that in the middle of the year because I, like I said, I tend to fall off the wagon. So, you know, we all do, but this is a great time to really start to hone back in on that and detox the body. So that is certainly something that I would encourage you all to do is to go ahead, start drinking lemon water, start drinking aloe vera water if you can, start drinking chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a great cancer fighting mineral and it's great to take that daily. You can put a few drops in your water. I will leave a link of the chlorophyll drops that I buy on Amazon. I, I've seen them on TV. I've seen them everywhere. They're pretty popular, the one, the brand that I buy. So I will link it for you all. And you can just put a few drops in your water or you can just put a few drops on your tongue in the morning, drink it down with some water. It really is great for the body. So certainly think about detoxing and cleansing your body at this time of year. It's a great way to restart your energy and just kickstart everything inside of you to get you going and feeling good, particularly in relation to that last tip, you know, starting those fitness days and working out again and really just getting out there and kicking up that energy again. So hopefully that'll help you all. Let's go ahead and move on to the next tip. Okay, so the next tip that I have for you all to start your mid-year reset is to start journaling again. I absolutely love journaling. I've loved it since I was a teenager. It's something that I got into at about age 12. And so I've just always loved journaling. I find it to be an amazing release. It's a great way to just release any pent up feelings. It's a great way to remember things. It's a great way to track your emotional highs and lows. I just love journaling and I love prompted journals personally. I've shared a few with you all in the past and I can link a few for you. So I'll leave those in the description if you're interested in some of the prompted journals that I really love. But I love journaling and this is the time of year that I tend to fall off the wagon with that. Like I did so good at the beginning of the year. My journal was like just so fruitful and I could just read over it and be like, look at me, I'm doing so good because I would rarely even skip a day. I would always just sit in the bed with it until I get ready to go to sleep and write in my journal. So at the beginning of the year, I was just on it, girl. I was just, I was on it. Now, I don't know what happened, okay? I can't even tell you what the last entry date of my journal is right now because it's been a minute, but I am getting on track right now. I wrote in it this morning when I woke up. So instead of picking up my phone, getting on social media, I picked up my journal and wrote in it. And I've been trying to do that, particularly on my days off work. When I let the sun wake me up, it's just nice to pick up my journal instead of picking up the phone, or turning on the TV and write some positive things in my journal. So that's certainly what I would encourage you all to do. Start journaling again. Like I said, it's a great way to release any pent up feelings. It's a great way to remember things. So if somebody did you dirty and you just feel like you just need to write it and let it go, like they say, put it in a bubble and blow it away journal it, leave it there, let it be on paper, leave it where it is. And like I said, it's also a great way to track those emotional highs and lows. So if there was something that just made you feel amazing and you just ended a day like, I am so blessed, God is so good. You have those days in your journal to look back on and make you feel good again. So I would encourage you all start your journaling again if you fell off like me. It's a great thing to do and we're at the middle of the year. It's a great time to start over. Let's do it y'all, we're doing that together now. Okay, start journaling, get back into it. On to the next one. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna share with you all is kind of more of a mid-year commitment that I've made that I thought I would share with you guys to encourage you possibly to do the same. And that is my commitment to watching less television and reading more. Now, I'm all about educating myself these days. I've really been into learning about finances, stocks, income property, Bitcoins, because I knew nothing about what that crap is and I was like scared to death of it before. So I've just been learning about financial stuff. I really have just been more about educating educating myself these days. And I find that watching TV, of course it's entertaining and it's relaxing. I love me a good TV show, y'all. Trust me, Alicia love a good TV show. I can sit in front of the TV all day, like for several days straight. But 
I find that I feel better about myself when I'm educating myself and being more productive and reading and absorbing and learning tends to make me feel a lot more productive and better about my life, especially at my age. You know, I'm really trying to start setting myself up for retirement. I'm in my forties, you know, it's time for me to really step up my game and to start paying attention about what's out there that I can invest in to set myself up. Because for a lot of us, social security is not going to be around. Like you can't depend on anything, even if you paid into it your whole life. We can't depend on any of that. We need to look into investments, income property, and just everything that we can to set ourselves up so that, you know, we're not working all the way into our eighties and nineties. You feel me? And then you just drop dead. You just been working your whole life. No, stop watching so much TV and start investing in yourself by reading more. I would encourage you all to do that. Turn that TV off, pick up a book, order you some, you know, audible books about stocks, finances, or anything you're interested in. If there's something you've been wanting to learn or just look more into, or if there's just general books you've been wanting to read, it's all educational and it's all helpful. And it keeps the brain strong. We have to keep our brains nice and strong. So I would encourage you all to do this, this commitment that I am doing, which is to watch less television and read more. It will be super helpful and Make you feel a lot better about yourself starting from this point to the end of the year so do this commitment with me y'all while i'm educating myself getting better learning and putting myself in a better position don't get left behind do this with me i would encourage you all to do it and i hope you will let me know in the comments if you plan to do it with me y'all so my next mid-year reset tip for you all is to write out a new list of goals the reason i would say do this is if you had like new year's resolutions or goals they might be completely different at this point like things could have happened that have completely changed your goal i know a lot of people have lost their jobs recently a lot of companies have been laying off some companies have been hiring but a lot have been doing layoffs and things like that, major layoffs. So you might have had the goal in the beginning of the year to buy a house, whereas your goal right now might be to find a job. So your goals might have completely changed and it's a good idea to go ahead and write them down so that you can start a plan of action. So I would say go ahead and write down a new list of goals or resolutions for this point forward to the end of the year. So whatever they are, go ahead and write them down. You know, it has been proving proven that writing things down is a great way not only to remember them but to manifest them so if you have things that you want to achieve write them down i promise you as i've been seeing things manifest in my life i'm finding that a lot of the things that are starting to happen for me are things that i wrote down it's like i just kind of released it out into the universe and the universe is answering write those things down whatever your goals are no matter how small how large if your goal is to meet a really great man or woman write it down and start a plan of action honey set up that profile on you know match.com or whatever don't be scared go out there and get what you want but start by writing it down and i would encourage you all to do that today get you a nice notebook or get you you know a, a nice journal or something like that write down your goals from this point forward for the end to the end of the year and start a plan of action for each one of them and watch them happen watch them happen i pray for you i pray right now that they will happen for you i pray that they will happen for you and i know that they will all righty so we are on our last tip for a successful mid-year reset and this tip is kind of an encouraging one give yourself some positive feedback over the things that you have accomplished this year and you might find it hard to think of things that you have accomplished but i promise you there are things that you've accomplished this year whether it was overcoming a detrimental loss in your family whether it was moving to a new location whether it was you know just promoting on your job it can be so many things that you don't even think of because they're kind of small to you that are accomplishments that you can pat yourself on the back for. And this is really great also for manifesting because when you put out that sort of energy, that energy of gratitude and accomplishment and success, it sort of just multiplies in your life. It really does, it multiplies. So like for me personally, looking at, you know, my achievements on YouTube and you know how I've kind of just tried to be consistent with my content creation and uploads and things like that. It really is something that I can give myself credit for and feel good about. And you know, just also some personal goals, getting off some of my COVID weight that I gained. You guys may or may not have noticed, but girl lost a little weight, hey, hey, okay. So getting some of that off is a good feeling. 
amazing. I think I've lost probably about 13 pounds, which I feel amazing. I'm super happy about it because I gained a lot of weight at the end of last year, like a lot, y'all. And some of y'all know this, some of y'all may have not, but I did. But I'm working it off now and I'm feeling really good about it. So that's something I can pat myself on the back about. You know, just there's just things that I can look on my life and say, okay, at least I did that. That's a good thing. Okay, since January, I was at least able to do this, this, and this. So I would say, you know, go over those things and give yourself some credit for the things you have been able to accomplish. Do a little positive review of your life, whether it was to get out of a toxic relationship or a toxic friendship and you've successfully done that, whether it was to minimize your use of social media and you've successfully done that. I know there are things that you all can look back on and say, okay, I did that at least. I did that. And that's what I want you guys to do for this last tip is to create that positive energy by doing a mid-year review of the things that you have accomplished and giving yourself some credit for it. And I would say, write those things down. If you have a gratitude journal, I have a gratitude journal that I love to write in. Write those things down in your gratitude journal. So th this is, like I said, just putting out positive energy, manifesting even more positivity and more success in your life. Write it down. Even the small things that you've accomplished, write them down. So if uh, I had a goal of, um, you know, not leaving dishes in the sink so long, like, you know, cause dishes, they, they'll get up and walk sometimes. If, Girl, look, I ain't even gonna put it out there, but I hate washing dishes. I cannot wait to have either a housekeeper or a dishwasher. One or the other has to come to me. But I made the goal of just being a little bit more tidy in the kitchen and I've accomplished it. My kitchen is always nice and tidy. And you know, I'm just proud of myself, okay? I'm proud of myself for that. So super proud. And yeah, just even those little things like that, they matter. And so I would say, review those positives, give yourself some credit so that you can manifest more of that positivity and success in your life. That's my last tip. Hopefully you all find these super helpful. Let's get on it. It's mid year. We have time to do what we need to do. Thank you all so much for checking out this video all about how to do a successful mid year reset. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some great tips and tricks to help you all get refocused on your goals or maybe even realign and reassign your goals goals based on your needs for the rest of the year. Like we have a lot of time left in this year and there's so much that we can do with that time. So I really hope this video is helpful and I want to send a special thank you to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. I am super excited to be working with you all on today's video. I take my mental health so serious. So like I said to you all in the beginning, I've suffered from depression in the past. So I really do try to pay attention to my mental health so that I never fall into that deep darkness again. So I would really encourage encourage you all to seek out better help if you're looking for a licensed therapist to help you deal with life challenges because lord knows we are facing a lot right now a lot there's talk of recessions there's talk of you know people's rights being taken away there's so much going on we have wars we have so much to be down about so if you just find yourself feeling super anxious or feeling depressed or feeling overwhelmed definitely seek out better help look for a therapist it's affordable it's private and it's on your time in your territory. So make sure you check them out. All of the information you'll need will be in the description below. So please check that information if you want to go ahead and look up a licensed therapist. They have marriage and family therapists. They have therapists for children, teenagers, and everything. So make sure you check them out. Thank you so much, BetterHelp, for helping us all. But I want to thank you all again for watching this video. I would love to hear in the comments, do you tend to slump in the middle of the year? And if you do, what things do you do to pull yourself out of it? and really realign yourself so that you can make the most of the rest of the year. I would love to hear about it. Make sure you leave me a comment so we can all share any information that might be helpful to each other. I love you guys and I will see you all on the next video. Bye.